Welcome to The Author Show, where we feature new authors and books, from fiction to self-help and everything in between. You'll find it all at theauthorshow.com. That's theauthorshow.com. And now let the show begin. Hello and welcome back to the show. This is your host, Don McCauley. Today we're welcoming the program author J.E. Pinto, and she is the author of The Bright Side of Darkness. Joe, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well today. How are you? Good. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, please. I am an author. I live in Colorado, and this is my first novel. Well, tell us about your book. This book is about mentoring. It's about a group of kids from the project and how their lives change when one of them, through some pretty sad circumstances, ends up with a mentor who teaches him to believe in himself. And it's about how everyone can do something to make a difference in the world. And who did you write your book for specifically? I wrote my book for people who love teenagers. Teenagers themselves initially, but people who love young adults and people who like to believe they can make a positive difference in the world. Teachers, people who work with at-risk youth, religious workers, pastors. Now, could you say there's any minimum reading age for the book? About middle school age, I would say, especially if they have adults in their lives they can talk to. It really depends on the kid. I probably wouldn't put it in an elementary school library, but I have had middle school age kids read it and enjoy it. Definitely high school kids up on into senior citizens have read it and enjoyed it. Is there a central message or perhaps underlying theme that you could say runs throughout the book? The theme that I wrote the book with is about mentoring and about making a positive difference in the world. The theme also that has come back to me from readers is about second chances and about not judging people. So that's been a secondary theme that other people have gotten from the book that pleases me. But the theme, the central running theme through the book is about making a difference in the world rather than sitting around complaining about the way the world is, that hope is an action away and that we all have a responsibility to do what we can to make positive changes. I'm really pleased that other people have come back to me talking about how the book affected them, reading about finding their inner strength and about not judging people by the way their circumstances have affected them. So that's been an honor to me to hear back from the responses I've gotten from people who have read the book. Out of all of that, what would you say is the single most important idea you're sharing in the book that's really going to add value to the reader's life? I think the the theme that will add value to the reader's life is hope is just an action away. And it's our responsibility to change the world as we can, where we can. If you compare your book with any book out there we might already be familiar with, which book would it be and why? If I could compare my book, The Bright Side of Darkness, to another book, it would be The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. The books are not the same, but they each have in them a group of young men in difficult circumstances who are loyal to a fault and go through tough times together. So I think they have those similarities. Tell us about some of the characters in the book. Well, the main character, Rick Myers, at the beginning of the book, has just lost his parents in a car wreck. And he has four lifelong friends that he considers his family. They've been together for years. And then he meets Daisy, a blind girl who has a dog and has run away from her abusive father and a foster mother who is too overprotective. And he falls in love with her and tries to keep her safe. And then later, Judge Walter Mills and his wife Alice come into play. 
and those are really the key characters. And there are a few additions later on, but those are the main players throughout the book. Is there anything else you can tell us about the storyline of the book? Those main characters go through some pretty terrible circumstances, and Rick is forced to rebuild his life after the bottom drops out of his world, and the judge and his wife help him come back through a mentoring situation, and then he helps his friends start to rebuild through the good influence that the judge and his wife have on him. And it's really a story of redemption. Did your environment or upbringing play any major role in your writing? When I was first married, my husband, six weeks after we got married, he fell ill with what turned out to be Lou Gehrig's disease. And we were very hard pressed. And we lived in a pretty rugged neighborhood. And we became the stable adults in an environment where a lot of other parents were either working or off doing crazy things with their lives. So our home became a hangout for a lot of kids and teenagers who needed band-aids for scraped knees, bicycle tire patches, breakfast, homework help, guidance, laundry done, relationship talks, all kinds of different things. And so the characters are all fiction, but we learned a lot about how things work in tough neighborhoods and what kids need. And I became pretty wise in the ways of things. And so my environment sort of lit the flame for this need for mentoring and this need for adults to step in with kids who might not have positive influences in their lives or who might just need some extra help along the way from people who don't even know they're out there or who might grumble about why the teenagers on the streets aren't going the right way when there isn't anyone to help them know what the right way is. How would you describe your writing style? The style in this book is very blunt. It's a first-person book told from Rick's point of view, and it's almost brutal. It's his feelings. It's from inside his head, and you get right on the roller coaster and you stay there. So be ready. Who or what would you say influenced your writing the most? I've known I wanted to be a writer since I found out that words could be written down, since my dad used to read to me as a little girl. And so I had my parents and then teachers and all the way on up. And then I wrote a short story for a high school English class, and that started this off. And then my first husband really pushed me to write this book, and he had some life circumstances that were similar to this book. And then, of course, we had all the stuff that happened in our home together. So he really pushed me to get this book out because he wanted, as I do, the voices of these kids to be heard and someone to tell their story. So there were a lot of influences that went into it. But the book is dedicated to him. He's not on this planet anymore, but but I dedicated the book to him because he felt as strongly as I do that these kids' voices need to be heard and their story needs to be told. Now, are your characters pure fiction or do you draw from people you know in real life? Well, the characters are fiction. They're made up, but there are a lot of little bits and pieces of things. I had a field trip in junior high where I went to talk to a local author. That was 35 years ago, and I don't remember her name. But she said to me, I'll never forget it, she said, it's like a bird building a nest when you write. She said, you take a twig from here and a tuft of grass from there and a bit of cloth from somewhere else, and you make a nest out of it. She said, and you live your life so that you have materials to gather from. And that's kind of how it is. I don't remember. I didn't put anybody real in the book, but I gathered a lot of materials from experiences that I had. Would you say you're more of a character artist or more a plot-driven writer? Oh, character, definitely, definitely. The characters wrote the book. I just wrote it all down. They decided what to do. 
In your opinion, who should buy your book? Teenagers and anyone who loves them. A lot of people who work with them, corrections people, counselors, church people, parents of teenagers, teachers, school librarians. I really would like to see this get to more school people. I really would like to see this get to more people that that work with teenagers in tough situations. This has been just great. Our guest today has been J.E. Pinto, and she is the author of The Bright Side of Darkness. Joe, thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. This is Don McCauley wrapping up another edition of The Author Show. The Author Show podcast can be accessed at any time by visiting theauthorshow.com. Selected interviews can also be found on major podcasting platforms like Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Play, and many more. If you're an author who would like to be featured, just visit theauthorshow.com and complete the interview request form, and we may contact you. Marketing is seldom easy for authors, and The Author Show is a great way to promote your work worldwide using a high-quality interview that can make a real impact. Check us daily as we continue to introduce wonderful authors of very interesting books on The Author Show. Thanks for listening to The Author Show. Find out more about authors and their work at theauthorshow.com. Theauthorshow.com. Tune in next time to another great author on The Author Show.